So we shot over a couple of nights at the V&A. It was sort of a night at the museum, working with dancers, working with really low light levels. It was quite a low budget film. Um, the camera shone, literally, because I discovered the ability to, to work in such low light levels that I'd never had the opportunity to work at before literally under the bounce light of street light off of clouds, the lighting the great room of uh, the cast room in the V&A with no additional light. Uh, but what surprised me was, was how uh, silky the image was in low light. There was no sense of grain or um, contrast, undue contrast. There was a real gentle roll off of, uh, of uh, crepuscular beauty. Um, it, it, it's, it's sort of extraordinary, the response of the camera in low light. But it was also an easy camera to work with. I discovered ways of looking that were much more naturalistic than I'm used to doing. Normally, particularly for night photography, there's a lot of intervention in terms of lighting. And here I discovered that I could have a, a more uh, reserved approach to my intervention with light and, and work with what was there. Uh, in fact, most of the time I was removing light uh, rather than adding it. And that was a, a, a new vocabulary for me in lighting terms. What was startling about this camera is how it captures the color red. And we used color quite avowedly and distinctly in, in this piece, this film. And to see the color not electronic anymore, to see it, not only the color wash, but also the source itself is held. So the, 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 the lamp itself captures the color. The sensor registers the color on the source, but it doesn't uh, dance, it doesn't buzz. What's really special about the camera is that how at the high end, at the, in the highlights, there's a lot of detail there. It, there's probably two and a half or three stops more sensitivity in the high end that I'm used to in a digital sensor. And that is really exciting when you've got sources in shot that are colorific. For instance, in this film, we had Astera tubes that were pink and red, and the lamps themselves still have the color, whereas in previous versions of digital sensors that I've used, they would burn out, they would peak, and it, it not in a good way. Here, there's, there's detail in the highlight, and sometimes you don't want that, but the great thing about the camera is that that can be controlled. You know, you can, you can select what your latitude is with the camera. And, and that gives you all the advantages when you want it. And when you don't want it, you can control that. So it's the best of both worlds. We, this film was made, it was quite low budget. Um, it, we were shooting on the hoof, it was, it was quite a, a fast shoot and we had to be light on our feet. There were dancers, uh, we were shooting all over the v &A Museum, the Victoria and Albert Museum. We had limited resources and limited amount of time to shoot, so we had to be very quick on our feet. So I lit it so simply, you know, it, pretty much the only sources we used were um, Astera tubes or available light. I mean, 
the final shots of the film where the clothes all fly up into the, 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 the atrium were only available light and uh, the, the, the sensor just behaved so beautifully in, in hot sunlight and in shadow. Well, the film we were making uh, with Georgia is a dance film effectively. So intrinsic to that was uh, a sense of forward motion and uh, dynamism in, in the camera, the way the camera moves, going from low to high. We wanted travel and, and uh, momentum. And I was really lucky uh, to, I've wanted to work with Charlie Rizek for so long, the great Trinity operator. Uh, and I've asked him to do several jobs in the past. He's never been available, but he was available on these uh, two days shooting. And I've got to say, he's a master of camera movement. And that rig, which was the Trinity rig, which I've never used before, was a revelation to me. So we were able to travel through that museum at all sorts of levels, all within the one shot. And the, the dancers, the choreographers, Max, um, was uh, really worked with the camera. So it was between Charlie and the dancers, there was a kind of a symbiosis, like a, a, a dance between them. And once you establish how you want it to feel and look, uh, I love that sense of, of uh, you know, the unexpected when a, an operator and a dancer start moving together and with music in the background as well. It, it, it really uh, was surprising when you see uh, things that you can't choreograph, you can't storyboard. It's purely in the here and now. I, on this film, I, I didn't uh, use any of the additional features of texture which the camera offers. I wanted to shoot clean as a whistle and, and to, to shoot virgin, if you like. Um, however, I would be interested in the future in, in using those uh, sort of attributes of the camera. I think it's really important when you're shooting to state your intent, photographic and cinematographic intent. And this is something that the camera allows for, is to, to burn it in to the look and to unequivocally show that this is your photographic intention. So that, that's a great uh, thing that the, the camera has. And it's, it's nice to be able to make your statement of intent photographically at the outset and it's irrevocable. So, you know, that's why we're cinematographers. We, we just don't want to capture the, the panoply uh, of, of possibilities and, and decide it afterwards, or God forbid, anybody else decide it afterwards. It's really nice as cinematographers that we make those choices and uh, that they're, that they're latent and, and built into the, the film that we shoot on the day. It's just like the choice of filtration, the choice of exposure, the choice of film stock that we used to have the privilege of. All those things are, are important to decide on the day. So textures are, are sort of intrinsic in, 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 in this tool for cinematography. We shot at 1,600 ASA, and there was no palpable grain at all. The look was so uh, fine and smooth. Uh, so at least when you've got a starting point, which is the best you can possibly see, uh, especially at such a, a high ISO, uh, it, it, it's, it's wonderful to know that you can push it even to 6,400 with no discernible degradation in quality or, you know, corruption of contrast or grain. Um, this is a, a game changer. I mean, this is, 
something that filmmakers can benefit from and it's only for the good health of our creativity as cinematographers.